All right guys, welcome back to another Tech Channel video. It's been a minute since we've been here on the Tech Channel. Uh, and if you guys haven't subscribed yet, make sure you do so. This is a separate channel from our main flight test channel. And this is where we do all of our educational, informational, and instructional content, all based around RC aviation. So today's a special day because today we have the newest, latest, and greatest technology from our friends over at Insta360. It's a really awesome camera. And this is the second generation of their original Insta360 One X. Now, you guys may remember I built a flying 360 camera wing with the original Insta360 One X. And we've also used that camera on a ton of projects like when we dropped watermelons. I think the camera itself, the original One X, it actually met its demise on the Millennium Falcon shoot when it fell into a river. The good news is, is that the Insta360 One X2, one of the newest features on it is that it's waterproof. So we don't have to worry about that anymore, which is pretty awesome. So one thing to keep in mind with this video is this is coming from the perspective of flight test. Uh, specifically me, and we use 360 cameras in a very specific way, as most people do. Us specifically, we fly our cameras on RC aircraft, whether it's airplanes or drones. I've been flying this guy particularly a lot on my chase quad. Um, it's a high velocity uh, racing FPV drone. And I gotta be honest, it's been pretty awesome. It's almost like a completely different discipline than flying a normal action camera. So we're gonna get into the specs first. I'm gonna tell you everything you need to know about this camera, what all it can do, and then we're gonna get into a little bit of our experience of what we've experienced with it so far. Maybe talk about the type of person who would really get a lot of value out of a camera like this. Resolution on 360 cameras is a little bit different because obviously there's two lenses on this and that's how they achieve the 360 degree video. You obviously have a camera on this side filming everything on one end and then this camera, and then the software automatically stitches those two frames together and it literally gives you a virtual reality space that you can look around in post and pick out what shots you want to frame up. Before we get into the specs, I guess I should say for people who aren't familiar with 360 cameras, how it basically works is there's two end products of a 360 video. One of which is what you see us do in our videos is we record a video in 360 degrees and then afterwards in post-production, we pick what 16 by nine, 1080p frame we want to show of that 360 video and then we edit that into our videos. The other alternative is to upload a raw 360 degree video and you can do that on things like YouTube and Facebook and you can actually allow people maybe if they have a VR headset or even just with their phone they can actually watch the video and kind of look around at every single thing that you captured in 360 degrees so if you're new to 360 that's kind of how it works and yes you can actually upload these videos and you can view them in VR um, it's really really cool to kind of even just take still photos you go on vacation or you're going somewhere you unique or maybe you're at a wedding, you take one photo and if you have a VR headset, you can go back in time and it literally feels like you're there and you can look around at everything in that moment in time, which is pretty cool. So this thing will record at 5.7K and even more importantly is it will record at a higher bit rate compared to the original Insta360 One X. Basically what that means is it's gonna be a little bit higher quality. Now also the thing to keep in mind is that 5.7K sounds like a lot and it is, um, but keep in mind if you are shooting in 360 and then going back and cropping a 1080p frame to put it into your 1080p video or even maybe a 4k video 5.7k is the entire resolution of the entirety of the 360 degree video which is pretty good now speaking of resolution at that 5.7k resolution it will record at 30 frames per second and the cool thing about it is is that it also has an HDR or a high dynamic range mode and at that mode because it's using more processing power I'm assuming it will only record at 24 frames per second, which is still fine and you can still use that a lot. I personally have been recording at 5.7K at 30 frames per second, not using the HDR because we upload all of our videos at 30 frames per second and that's important to me. That being said, the 30 FPS footage has looked just fine, it looks great. So one other thing that they're touting on this new one is it has improved audio over the last one and that is a big thing with action cameras is they're kind of known for not having the best audio. So any improvement in the audio department is always a plus. Uh, on top of that, one of the big features, there's two big features on this, and the first one is the bigger battery. Um, that was one of my only complaints with the original one is the battery wasn't bad, but we just found ourselves having to replace it a lot. And we had extra battery, so it was a non-issue. But this one specifically, it has this huge battery. I mean, you can just see the difference in size. And they're, uh, they're saying that this will give you about a 55% increase in battery life, which is awesome. I was really happy to see that in this new model. Now, the other big noticeable visible difference between 
this in the old one is this new screen. It's got this little circular porthole looking color touchscreen, which is pretty awesome because it really helps when you're trying to get your settings right the way you want them. Uh, but most importantly is you can actually see what you're filming before you film it. That's huge. The other one, you could not do that. You had to bind it up to your app, which works. This just takes one of those steps out of the process. So you can kind of get a look. Actually, we were putting it on a plane yesterday and we were wondering how it was going to look and we're able to kind of not only just see what it looks like, but you can actually use the touch screen to look around full 360 degrees so you can see everything. It is small, but it definitely gets the job done. Now, like I said earlier, another big feature that is going to benefit us is the new waterproof. And you can see that specifically in the hatches, uh, you can just kind of feel that it feels more robust. It feels like it definitely is waterproof, but if you open the battery, you open the USB port, it's got little seals around them and they latch shut really tightly. So you can definitely tell that it's waterproof um, and it will go up to 10 meters underwater, which is pretty good. Hopefully we'll never have to go dive in that deep to retrieve this after we fly it on something. I was flying this thing on an early morning the other day where there's a bunch of dew on the grass. There was even some fog in the air and I was going through getting uh, moisture on the lens and all over the camera. And it was just nice to know that I didn't have to worry about this thing getting wet. Um, I could still try to get the best footage possible without worrying about the condensation. Another cool thing, which might not seem significant, but it actually is kind of a game changer in my opinion, is this rubber lens cover. You wouldn't think about it, but if you look at this thing, it's got lenses on both sides and rounded edges. So like, no matter what you do when you're holding this thing, when you want to set it down, it's really hard to not set it on its lenses. Now, it does come with like a little nylon padded sleeve that you can put the whole camera on, uh, but they sell this thing separately. I thought it was kind of cool, so I figured I'd mention it just because it is nice to see them coming out with some kind of lens caps for these 360 cameras because previously I haven't seen anything like this on any 360 cameras, so that is a nice feature. The cool thing about when it stitches those two videos together is there's actually just a tiny bit of dead space where the stitching occurs. It's barely noticeable when you see it on video, but the cool thing about that is, is it allows for things like the selfie stick. So say you have this thing on a selfie stick, which it does come with, you're not gonna see the selfie stick. So that's how you see when we're walking around with this thing, it looks like somebody's actually filming us. It looks like we have a camera crew there filming us, but it's actually not, it's on a selfie stick stick and the selfie stick is invisible. What we do is we tape the stick to an airplane and it gives us really cool shots. It looks like a drone is like right off the wingtip or something like that, but it's actually not. It's attached to the plane, but the selfie stick is invisible. So on top of that, the Insta360 has always come packed with very powerful software, both for the desktop as well as mobile. On top of that, another cool thing that I noticed that they added on this is a Steadicam. And basically it turns your 360 camera into a normal action camera. So if you want, you basically turn off one of the lenses, it utilizes the other lens, and you can kind of run around and shoot with this thing just as an action camera, and it has built-in image stabilization, which is pretty cool, because one of the things that I notice is as cool as 360 cameras are, it's very rare that you want to capture absolutely everything in 360. So this gives you the flexibility to have one camera that you can go out, maybe take it on vacation, um, and you're not going to come back with just huge 360 files only. Only, you can pop it into Steadicam mode and you can either film forward or you can do kind of a selfie. You can even vlog with this thing a little bit. It gives you a little bit more flexibility. Now, speaking of steady cameras, the one thing that Insta360 is really well known for is flow state stabilization. Now, I've been using this a lot. I have their other camera, the Insta360 ONE R with the one inch attachment. Um, that is not a 360 camera, but it does have flow state stabilization. It's very similar software and this 360 camera camera is no different. And basically what it allows you to do is it's digital image stabilization that utilizes onboard hardware like accelerometers and gyros to basically keep the camera steady when you're moving it around. When you look at this 360 footage, you'll notice that the horizon in the background is nearly perfectly stable the entire time, no matter what the camera is doing. I could have this on a drone doing flips and through the power of the flow state stabilization, it keeps, it looks like a gimbal. It keeps everything perfectly stabilized, which is pretty cool. Now this camera is still using the flow state stabilization, but they're also touting that this one has a new and improved algorithm, which is gonna give you more stable shots than ever. Now, one of the other things that I actually didn't realize until I stumbled across it in the Insta360 Studio desktop app is Deep Track. Now Deep Track is a game changer for me specifically because one of the realities of 360 degree video is that it makes capturing every Every single thing in the moment extremely easy. You're guaranteed that you're going to capture everything in that 
space and time, no matter what. The catch is, is that there's a little bit more post-production work that you have to do. Specifically, like I said earlier, for us and our workflow, we have to go back in and we have to keyframe everything so we keep the airplane in frame the whole time or whatever it is that we're filming. With Deep Track, you can actually highlight a subject, just put a square around the subject and hit go and it will actually process and use its algorithm to keyframe the entire video for you, which is a game changer. It still takes a little bit of time, but it, you can let that run in the background while you work on other stuff. So it really has helped our workflow out a ton. On top of all this functionality, they also have what they call Shot Lab. Now Shot Lab is kind of a treasure trove of different shooting modes that you can use to get all kinds of unique and cool effects. So for our case with this, we've been using this thing for about a week and for us, it's a game changer because it addressed the things that we thought were the most important, which one was the battery. Um, the 55% increased battery is nice. A lot of times what will go out, we, we make like 15, 20 minute videos on YouTube, but oftentimes when we're out here shooting, it's like 30 minutes to an hour. And a lot of times what we'll do is we have like nine, 10 cameras rolling all at once, one of which being a 360 camera, we'll let them run nonstop. And so having that extra battery for us is, is, is very nice. We're also flying out here at Edgewater. We have the river, we've got a pond over there. And a lot of times it just rains. Sometimes the river floods. Having this thing waterproof is a game changer for us because we don't have to worry. I can go out and fly over water, like for example, the Widgeon video, and I don't have to worry about this thing taking a drink. My drone might be hosed, but this thing is gonna be fine. We can recover the drone, get this thing back up, and the footage is gonna be preserved, which for us is like the most important thing. And then lastly, the big thing for us is the color screen. Um, it's definitely a luxury. You can make it work without a screen, but being able to look at where the thing is, a lot of times it's hard to envision what a 360 shot is going to look like without seeing it on screen. You don't know if you should put it, you know, six inches off of the top of the plane or 12 inches, uh, because it can really make a difference in the perspective of the plane when it's flying. And so having this little screen on there and not only having a screen, but also touch screen being able to look around, it's it's a game changer. So if you're in the market for a 360 camera or even potentially just an action camera with added functionality, I would definitely recommend checking out the Insta360 ONE X2. It really is kind of a jack of all trades, especially with that new Steadicam feature. You can flip it into basically an action camera mode and you get the best of both worlds. Now, if you're an FPV pilot or something like that, like I said earlier, we've been using the Insta360 ONE R on my Chase Quad. Uh, you may wanna look at something like that if you're looking for more action heavy kind of footage. However, if you're a 360, maybe you got a VR headset or something like that, and you're looking for a way to capture memories or maybe even RC flights, um, this is kind of the way I would probably go in terms of 360. So huge shout out to our friends over at Insta360 again for hooking us up with this thing before it was even out. That being said, the camera is available now. You can check all the links in the description if you wanna learn more about this. Let us know down in the comments, are you shooting a lot of 360 degree footage? Do you use more action cameras? What cameras are you using? What settings are you using? We'll be hanging out in the comments down below, so make sure you do that. Also, like I said earlier, make sure you subscribe. This is our secondary channel. This is Flight Test Tech. This is where you're gonna find all kinds of informational and educational content, uh, specifically in regards to RC aviation. And until the next one, guys, we'll see you later.